In this video, we're going to go over our settings for Warzone Season 2. They actually have added quite a few different settings options now inside the game for Season 2. And we're going to go over all the settings that we use. If you learned something new from this video, don't forget to leave us a like. Also, if you're new to the channel, subscribe as we're trying to reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers. And we've been making videos almost daily now. And also, click the link in the description and follow us over on Twitch. We want to reach our goal of hitting about 100 followers over there. So if you can help us achieve that goal, that would be greatly appreciated. So the first thing I do want to mention is that I am a controller player and I play on PC. So some of these settings might not apply to console. And on top of that, I'm not going to go over keyboard and mouse settings because I actually don't have a clue where to start with those. So we're going to talk about controller settings, general, graphics and audio. They're the main ones that most people will be using. Uh, so in terms of general settings, the one that I believe should be on console by now, especially on next gen consoles anyway, is the field of view setting. But currently this is only available uh, on PC and I have this set to 120 FOV. Now, some people have it set less and if you're new to PC gaming, I recommend starting at about 100 FOV and then bumping it up gradually. Then for the ADS field of view, personally I use affected, I'd rather have the larger FOV even when I'm aimed down sights, but if you struggle to see targets at a distance with that high FOV, then try independent. Independent is a good option as well. It's really down to personal preference here, but I personally prefer affected. Brightness, I definitely think 60 to 65 is the best brightness for Warzone, and it's usually set to 50, but because of the rose skins and how dark a lot of the skins are in the game now, I do think you need up your brightness just to be able to see in those darker areas. So like I said, I recommend 60 to 65. Um, anything in between that range is completely up to yourself. In terms of heads up display, you can shrink this in a bit to not have to move your neck as much when you're looking at the edges of the screen because it'll bring all the HUD closer together. But I like having the HUD on the edges of the screen anyway, so I just have that set to default. Then moving on to subtitles, I do have this disabled. But I know a lot of players that actually play with subtitles enabled and it's not because they can't hear very well. It's just that when they're in gunfights and stuff like that, if the subtitles come up on the screen letting you know like a UAV is coming or a cluster strike's coming, you can actually see it on screen. So that actually might help you if you struggle to hear certain things uh, going on around you, especially if you're not using a headset. But personally, I have subtitles disabled because my headset's pretty good. I can hear most things. Colorblind type, I highly recommend choosing either the Deuteranopia or whatever it's called or the Tritonopia. Both of these two options are the best two options for colorblind settings. I personally prefer this one. I just think it makes the game a lot more vibrant without having to use any Nvidia filters or any of that kind of stuff. And it also helps you see enemies a bit better as well. Then colorblind target, I have set to both. So it affects your HUD as well as your game, as well as your interface, like I said. For minimap, if you're using a circle minimap by now, you have to change this. The square minimap actually shows you much more on it. I think it's about a 20% increase about what you can see on your minimap. So make sure you're using the square minimap. There's no reason to use a circle shape. Uh, minimap rotation, I have enabled. Uh, compass, cardinal, directional text, I have set to letters. The rest of these settings um, don't really matter too much. It's all based around PC and showing your PC's performance and all that kind of stuff. Personally, I do have a few of these enabled just so I can see if my PC is running correctly. So if you are using a PC, then you can have these settings if you want, but they're not really too important to the game itself. Now moving on to graphics settings. So this is where a lot of that PC aspect is going to come into it. If you do run on console, the only the end of this section uh, you need to interest yourself with. But to begin with, this is all kind of PC based. Uh, in terms of display mode, I have full screen borderless. A lot of people do play on full screen as well. Uh, which both are great options, but borderless just allows you to tab out and go through different applications much easier. Uh, so that's what I use. I think it's just definitely the better option there. Uh, they're both, in terms of performance wise, are exactly the same. So you're not going to get more frames doing full screen borderless over full screen. It, you're going to get pretty much the exact same performance. It just makes it easier if you're using other applications in the background. Make sure display monitor is set to your actual monitor that you're using. And make sure your display adapter is set to the graphics card you're using. Uh, for screen refresh rate, mine is 144 hertz, so that's what it's set to. You can't really change this, I don't think, anyway. Uh, then for the aspect ratio, make sure you have it set to 16 by 9 or whatever the aspect ratio of your monitor is. Automatic usually works fine, but I just thought I would lock it to 16 by 9 just to make sure. For VSync, make sure you have this disabled. This will give you the maximum possible frame rate out of your PC. 
Now, if your display can't refresh uh, the frames as quickly as your graphics card is producing them, then you might experience screen tearing. And in that case, you do want to enable uh, V-Sync because that's going to sync up the frames and make sure that you're not getting a lot of screen tearing going on. But personally, I have this disabled. You do want to set a custom frame rate limit. Now, my rule of thumb is just set it a little bit higher than what your actual screen refresh rate is. So my refresh rate for my monitor is 144 hertz. So I have this set to 146 hertz. It's just so that if it does produce any frames higher than that, it can still display them. Uh, and then for menu frame rate, as well as out of focus frame rate, I have set to 60. You don't want your graphics card to have to overwork in the menus because you don't really need that high frame rate anyway. Uh, when you're just looking through your class setups or if you're just trying to set out uh, loadouts and all that kind of stuff. Nvidia highlights I have set disabled. I record on a separate PC, so I don't really need this. Uh, reflex low latency, something I, I didn't use before, but now I have started using it once I realized how it works. So this actually reduces the latency within your PC itself. So it's not actually to do with the internet speeds or anything like that. It's to do with when you perform an action on your PC, you want it to have the lowest possible latency for it to show up on your display. So that's why I do have it enabled. And then some graphics cards can make use of the enabled plus boost. Personally, I just have it set to enabled. I think that works perfectly fine. Um, make sure you always have the shaders installed. Otherwise your game will play really, really weird. And even though you have like a super high end graphics card, you'll still only get like 60 FPS, which is going to be insane. So make sure you have the shaders installed uh, every time you launch your game. Display Gamma, I have it set to 2.2. I've not really changed this from the default. Streaming quality, I have set to normal. Um, I don't really have it set to low because I just want to make sure I can see um, the best possible graphics on my screen in terms of streaming quality. Uh, and that's so you can render at those further distances. Now, it tells you on screen as well that if you have less than 4 gigabytes of VRAM uh, in your graphics card, then use low. Uh, but like I said, it kind of just depends on what kind of hardware you have. Texture resolution, again, I have it at normal. I do believe normal is more than enough than you need. High is good enough, but I believe it just uses extra performance and doesn't really give you a huge extra bonus over normal anyway. So normal is perfectly fine. Anzotropic filtering, I use as normal as well. Again, I don't really need to use high or anything like that. I don't think it gives you any extra benefit. Particle quality, I've set to low. Now, you don't want your particles to be super, super high. They don't actually add anything in terms of like giving you extra detail or giving you extra information in your game. It just makes your game look a lot nicer. Now, if you do have a super high end graphics card and you want your game to look super, super nice, then by all means, put this to high. But if you're running on a decent graphics card and you just want the best performance, put this to low. Bullet impacts definitely need to be enabled and this will show you if enemies have been nearby. So if there's bullets on a door or bullets on a wall nearby, that means you know enemies have came past this area. So that's why I have it set to enabled. Tessellation, I have set to all. I just had this set since the beginning and I don't really feel the need to change it. It just makes the game look less jaggy in my opinion. So that's why I have it set to all. On-demand texture streaming, I have disabled. Now, if your Wi-Fi is not the best and you don't have good connection speeds and all that kind of stuff, make sure this is disabled. Shadow map resolution, now you could benefit from having this a bit higher. Personally, I've gotten used to using this on normal. Just being able to see the shadows in general is very important because you want to see if enemies are nearby and the amount of times I've seen enemy shadows uh, to get certain kills is so important. So make sure you don't go any lower than normal. Normal is kind of like the, the base I would recommend. Uh, so if you're trying to get the maximum performance, I would definitely go for normal. If you've got good hardware, by all means, put this higher. Cash spot shadows disabled. Cash sun shadows disable that too. Particle lighting again. This is just for extra detail, making your game look really nice. You don't need this. I have this set to low. Ray tracing definitely disable that stuff. You don't need it. It's going to make your game look amazing. Don't get me wrong. Your game will look really good with this. But if you're trying to get the best performance and try to be as competitive as possible inside of Warzone, you need to disable this. Ambient inclusion I have set to disabled. I think it just makes your game look overall fuzzy in my opinion, and I don't really like that space reflections i have set to disabled um then anti-aliasing i have set to filmic uh two times that's the best anti-aliasing uh, that you can get now if you don't have the best hardware you can always go for one times or that the other option as well 
depth of field make sure you have this disabled now this is available on console as well make sure this is turned right the way down you do not want anything that's going to blur your vision i would never play with depth of field enabled because it's going to make your background blurry and the background being blurry is going to be really difficult at spotting enemies and things like that so make sure you have this disabled if you're playing warzone on console or on pc filmic strength adds film grain to your game and personally it's just going to add more kind of fuzziness to the game so that's why i have this turned right down you don't want any of this at all you want your game to look as crisp and clear as possible so you can see all your enemies at a distance or even at close range motion blur again is another blur effect that you don't need in the game so make sure you turn this off for both world as well as weapon so make sure both of these are turned off you don't need it at all film grain i have turned right down uh, as well again some more graininess and blurriness that you need to add to your game don't add it in and this is a couple of new settings that have been added in so let's say you don't have the best kind of graphics card to run warzone but you do want to make sure you're always hitting like 100 fps or 60 fps or whatever you can get then you can choose dynamic resolution now what this does is it's going to scale your resolution up and down to match the frame rate that you set so let's say you set 120 fps for your game this can actually change your resolution whilst you're playing just to make sure you're always hitting 120 fps so let's say in a good area of the map you can get 1440p and you can get 120 fps then in a bad area of the map if you're not getting 120 fps on 1440p but you can get it on 1080p it will scale down your resolution now personally i feel like this is just very distracting in my opinion i'd rather have a set resolution and my frame rate vary some people could use this if you don't have the best hardware available moving on to audio settings now now there's only a few audio settings that are important the first is your audio mix now i've gotten used to using boost low i feel like this is the best for hearing footstep sounds enemy revive sounds and all that kind of stuff so this is my personal favorite i know a lot of other players use boost and boost high as well but play around with these three options uh these will be the best in terms of giving you the best sound and another really important thing is make sure you turn your music volume all the way down i know the music in this game is good and the developers will spend time on working on that kind of stuff but when you're in game you want to have no music distracting you because you won't be able to hear enemy footsteps or anything important in terms of sound effect volume and it also makes you have juggernaut music turned down as well you don't need this either Hit marker sounds i have set to modern warfare some people set it to classic but it doesn't really matter it's personal preference then down at the very very bottom of this as well and i don't know if this is available for console as well but we have war tracks as well as war tracks volume and when i'm a passenger i have war tracks disabled and that's so i don't hear any extra music that i don't need in game once again so i can hear more enemy footsteps or just sounds going on around in the game that are more important and then war tracks volume i have disabled as well i don't really listen to any of this extra sounds and stuff in the game then lastly moving on probably to the most important settings uh, in my opinion i have the controller settings on screen just now so personally i use tactical uh, and that's so that i can slide with a right thumbstick but i actually use an xbox elite series controller and use the back paddles to slide and jump but if you're using a regular xbox or playstation controller i recommend using tactical is definitely the best option because you can slide and slide cancel with the right thumbstick meaning that you don't need to take your thumb off the thumbstick to slide cancel and it means you can also slide and aim at the same time which is very important so make sure you're using tactical in terms of stick layout leave that default <laughs> invert vertical look definitely this to default uh, dead zone you'll need to set depending on what your controller is like so if you've got an older controller you'll need to set a higher dead zone if you've got a newer controller you can set a lower dead zone personally 0.08 works fine for me and my controller in terms of sensitivity now uh, i found this is really important for a lot of players and i would only recommend three sensitivities here five six and seven now a lot of players do play on like 20 20 which is insane or play super low like three and three which again i find really insane but a really good middle ground is five six or seven and that's for both the horizontal and vertical six sensitivity now these are two of the most important settings inside the entirety of warzone in my opinion inside warzone especially for your aim if you're wondering why you're missing a lot of your shots this is the reason why uh, and it doesn't matter what your aim assist settings are and all that kind of stuff because these are the settings that are the most important so your aim down sight low zoom multiplier so anything below a 3.25 scope 
I personally have mine set to 0.75. Now, I used to have it set to 0.85, and then I bumped it down to 0.8, and I don't, bumped it down even further to 0.75. This means that you can move your aim very slowly once you've aimed down at an enemy. It allows you to get easier headshots. It allows you to stay on target better instead of your aim flying all over the place. And I find it's very helpful in making sure that you land all of your shots. And even tracking targets is so much easier when you have a lower multiplier zoom. Now, having said that though, when I get to the ADS multiplier for high zoom, I have this set higher. So this is going to make sure that the zoom moves much quicker when I'm scoping around. Now, I tend to use iron sights or a VLK optic for most of my low zoom weapons. So this is assault rifles, SMGs and all that kind of stuff. And that is the best for those kind of weapons. But if you're using a sniper rifle, for example, you want to be able to scan very quickly. And a lot of sniping on controller is down to whether or not you can scan past the enemy's head. And when it slows down, you can take the shot very quickly. So make sure you have this set slightly higher than the standard. So that's why I have ADS on high zoom set a little bit higher. In terms of aim response curve, you want to set this to either standard or dynamic, depending on what you prefer. Personally, I use dynamic because trying to snap between targets is much easier than the standard because if you get closer to an enemy, it's going to slow down, uh, but dynamic kind of speeds up a little bit closer to an enemy and then it slows down once you start getting aim assist. Control of vibration, have it turned off. You don't need it at all. It's just going to distract you or make your aim worse. Aim assist, I have set to standard. A lot of people use other settings, but I think this is just the best. Scale aim assist with FOV I have set to disabled. I don't want my aim assist to change when I have a higher FOV. Weapon mount animation I have set just to the standard here. Uh, weapon mount movement exit I have set to enabled. Aim down sight behaviors hold. Equipment behaviors hold. Re use and reload behavior. You need to make sure you have this set to contextual tap. This will help you when you're trying to reload or pick up weapons at the same time. It will prioritize your reload before picking up weapons. Depleted ammo weapon switch I have set to disabled and the reason for this is because let's say I'm using an SMG uh, and I run fully out of ammo on that SMG but I do need to move quickly out of a situation. I still want that SMG in my hands instead of an assault rifle or a sniper for example because I can definitely move much quicker with it. If you have this set to enabled it will automatically try and put you back onto your weapon that has the ammo available. So I would rather have this set to disabled and switch it when I need to. Armor plate behavior, I have set to apply all. This is very important, especially when you're trying to slide cancel, get to a different position. You don't want to have to hold the triangle or the Y button all the time. For movement settings, you want slide behavior set to tap. This will allow you to slide cancel much, much easier than usual. Auto move forward, I have this set to disabled. Uh, I don't really know any reason why you'd want this enabled in my opinion. Now, I do use automatic tack sprint. Now, I find this very useful to make your movement as fast as possible. You don't need to keep clicking in your analog stick all the time to try and make sure you're tack sprinting away from an enemy or try to get to a new position. Like I said, I've gotten very used to this and there is benefits and drawbacks to using automatic tack sprint, automatic sprint and disabling it entirely. Because if you do use auto tack sprint, sometimes hit firing is very difficult because it takes a couple of extra seconds for you to use your sprint to fire and shooting takes a couple of seconds as well to sprint to fire as well um so like i said you do get a benefit to movement but then when you're trying to fire it's going to take a couple of extra milliseconds so so it's very important to keep that in mind vehicle camera recenter i've been considering putting this to disabled but i can't really get used to that but i have it set to enabled auto parachute deploy make sure you have this set to disabled you want to make sure you pull your parachute as late as possible without splatting on the ground of course you don't want to make a pancake you want to make sure that you land before enemies so that you can grab loot much quicker than they can so there we have my best settings for warzone season 2. they did add a couple of extra features for graphic settings inside warzone which i've already covered now so if you found this video helpful don't forget to subscribe to the channel as we try to reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers also click the link in the description and follow us over on Twitch and thank you very much for watching.